Uh, we'll go ahead and open with any prayer requests or any testimonies. Okay. Anything on anyone's heart? Anybody wants to share? I guess me. Uh, <clears throat> Excuse me. You know, the hurricane situation, uh, things are actually well. I, I knew that nothing major was going to happen. I heard that uh, the Virgin Islands got hit fairly hard. But looking at the pictures and videos online, it's not anything that I haven't seen before. So I'm not concerned. In my opinion, even though it was the strongest, stronger storm, the damage in Texas was greater. And, and I think it has to do with uh, hurricanes being so common in that area, you know, for years, precautions have been taken to make sure that the damage is not that much. All I've seen right now is just power lines that have fallen trees, that have fallen on the street or, or on cars, things like that. But it's been very comical too because Puerto Ricans are quite characters. <laughs> A guy wrapped his car in uh, plastic wrapping to protect it from any damage. And I thought that was pretty funny. Uh, but yeah, so my family is fine. The rain, the rainfall down in the south of the island where we're from, it's just like your regular rainy day. There's barely any wind. And so, I mean, this, the hurricane is moving pretty much in the projected uh, trajectory that they had, but it shifted a little bit to the north. See? So, see? Yeah. Well, what the Lord was showing me, and I was talking to Sarah, she could confirm it, but as we're praying and interceding, the path of that storm was Puerto Rico down here mm -hmm. and then Florida up here. But as we were praying, we were squeezing it like this. Yeah, squeezing yeah. it together as we're praying. Yeah. So. Mm -hmm. So, it, uh, one thing that I was telling Kelly is that there's the rainforest in the northeast corner of the island. And usually when a hurricane goes that route, as soon as they, it hits the mountain, it loses momentum and, and force. Granted, it's like 30 miles north of that, so it's not going to hit. We're just getting basically the, the surrounding of the rain and, and wind. So I don't think anything major is going to happen. Probably they'll be back to work, if not tomorrow, uh, Friday. So that's, that's how good it was. So hopefully it keeps going up and it doesn't hit Florida because uh, I don't know how prepared they are. I know people are doing their due diligence. Mm -hmm. but, yeah. And I think it was Sally who said that there was a Christian meteorologist who was explaining just pray that the top gets mm -hmm. cut off. So I've been praying that the top gets cut off. It's sort of the source of the power. If the top gets cut off, the whole thing collapses and it becomes just a thunderstorm. The shear. Well, the shear, yeah. The, stronger, the strongest winds and the majority of the rain was in the north part of the storm. Mm -hmm. Actually, so the more it shifted up, it pulled it away from the majority of places. So, I mean, like I told my mom, like Sally said, uh, here on Sunday, just speak to it. And I sent my mom the scripture of Mark chapter 4, Jesus calming the storm. Yep. She was like, pray for us. She told me, pray for us tonight at church. I was like, okay. But I sent her the scripture kind of like a, an, uh, an indirect. I mean, it's, it says so. Be still, you know. And Kelly was freaking out. And my coworkers, my boss, and me message, I'm praying for Puerto Rico and your family. I was like, thank you, I appreciate that. And Kelly is wondering, how come you're not freaked out? Because I've, I've slept through hurricanes. Nothing's going to happen. Just don't worry about Jesus it. Jesus fell asleep. <laughs> <laughs> Stop it. Okay, that's enough. No more for you. <laughs> so, but yeah, I appreciate the prayers. Amen. 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 Yeah, my brother is from Pensacola or near Pensacola, so they get hurricanes all the time. So he posted a joke about, uh, you know, um, category one, you know, bring a raincoat, category two, um, bring some flip flops, don't wear your nice shoes, category three, we'll, we'll give you canoes, category four, you know, it's just a, 
you know, we help, we'll have, you know, canoes in and out, category five, uh, there's pizza in the break room after work. <laughs> so, yeah, praying for all those and the recovery efforts still in Texas. Uh, and I was, um, I had to laugh because, you know, we've been plagued with all this fake news, but there was an article on weather.com today about fake weather, don't believe all the pictures you see on the internet. It's the same shark everywhere, it's the same airplanes underwater everywhere, they're completely fake pictures, so don't fall for all the fake weather that you're seeing, and just know that um, the reputable sources are where you should go to get your information. <laughs> Any other prayer requests or testimonies tonight? All right, well, let's stand and go to the Lord tonight. Oh, Heavenly Father, we just come into your house, this house of prayer, Lord. We gather together to seek your face, Lord, to worship you together and to hear your word tonight. Lord, we pray for all those in the path of Hurricane Irma, and we just speak to that storm, peace be still, that that shear just gets chopped off supernaturally, Lord, and then it collapses and goes away. We pray against whatever the next hurricane might be, Hurricane Juan, that's somewhere stirring. And we pray the power right out of that storm right now. That it will be nothing but a tropical storm somewhere, not harming anybody, doing much harm. And Jesus, as these storms rage and as the fires rage and consume this land, Lord, we ask for you to stir the hearts of your people. We ask for you to stir your bride, Lord. Stir the church to rise up and take authority that you've given us over these natural disasters, over these storms, over these fires that rage. Lord, and let us find together, let us find the one thing we have in common. Religion doesn't matter, doctrine doesn't matter. The one thing that matters, the one thing we have in common is you. That when the name of Jesus is lifted high, that you will draw all men to yourself, Lord. And we look for Jesus and the people we meet. We look to introduce Jesus to the people that don't know you, Lord. It's all
Fallenbrook is on Monday. Oh, no. Yeah, my dad Fallenbrook is on Monday. We went to the orthopedic surgeon today, and she said he's not well enough to do the surgery to correct it. It's his left wrist, it's not his dominant hand, um, so he's in a cast. Um, I want him home at this point. I want him home. I want him under my care, under my protection, <laughs> under the Lord's care, under the Lord's protection. Um, I don't feel this facility is doing what it's intended to do. I want him home. So I pray that that all works itself out this week. And he can come home where he can rest, where he can get the sleep that he needs. He's so old. He wouldn't even recognize him, Sheila. He hadn't slept in two days, probably. And she read, prayer red rings around his eyes. And just take authority over sickness and disease. Yes. Um, over heart attacks, Lord. Over migraines, Lord. Over broken bones, Lord. There's no illness, there's no disease, there's no infirmity, Lord, that your blood can't cure, that your blood can't heal. Jesus, be with Sheila's daughter. Be the filter for that air that she breathes, Lord. Be the air that she breathes, pure and sweet, Lord. Give her relief. Let her find something that will give her relief. Lord, I ask that you make a way for my dad to come home. Yes, Lord. Where he can rest and be whole. And Lord, we pray for Tim and his sister. Lord, heal that woman. Let her rise. I don't care what the doctors say, Lord. You are a healer. And she knows you. Let her call upon you as a healer and let her rise and walk out of hospice. Be with that whole family. Give them hope. You. Jesus. I feel like we have a second. And I've never really kind of reconciled this in my spirit, but I feel like we have a say. And I've had this conversation with my dad recently because he's pretty scared of some of these procedures. And I said, Dad, are you ready to go? And he said, no. I said, then it's not time. And I feel like we have a say. In that conversation with him, we have a say. And we can't override what the person wishes. You know, we can pray for their healing, but if they don't want their healing, they don't believe they can be healed. I don't, I don't know how to reconcile that. I'm just saying, I feel like that we have a saying. So I, I asked him, and I feel like sometimes we need to ask people, what do you want? Jesus asked them and said, what do you want? Because when they said what they wanted, they had to believe he could do it. And so I feel like when we see a need, I know what the need is, but I still need to look at my dad and say, Dad, what do you want? What do you want the Lord to do for you? One, one of the last uh, rehearsals when Voices of Joy and Praises were here, they had a circle around and we were all praying and stuff and the Lord was leading. And I can't remember the name of the older lady. Uh, but someone asked about something, I need this, and she says, I don't want to hear what you need, I want to know what you want. I want to know what you want. That's what I want. I want to know what you want, and then you need to speak yeah. those things out and declare them, and declare and release them. So, yeah. Yeah. So, yeah. You need to speak to those things. Yes, amen. Yeah. Just a reminder to press up on, go ahead and shut them off, turn the volume down. And this Friday night, Eastern Union House of Park. Amen. Yes, um, we're going to uh, spend time seeking the Lord. Uh, spending time praying for each other, uh, situations, needs. Uh, we will have, uh, we will observe communion. We will uh, go through those situations. The thing is, um, in the beginning of the week, and it started up Sunday morning before service, uh, I know it may possibly be for me personally, but there's a shift going on and it's strange that all these storms are all happening at the same time that the Lord directed my path. He says, you need to go through these storms. On the other side of these storms, as you call these storms, there's revival on the opposite side, on the back side of these storms. Um, he says too many people have been skating around trying to get in the back door or trying to get, you know, call it revival or whatever else, but that's not what it's out. He said, you need to turn into the wind. You need to go in through those storms. You need to break through, declare, calm, and part all those storms to get where I'm calling you to go. We're going to, even tonight, we're going to start tapping into it. 
Friday night. I don't know what's going to happen. Um, I didn't know about it until the last 24 hours, but Kingdom House of Prayer is having another prayer burn Saturday. Uh, apparently, it's going to be every month, and it's going to be on the same weekend of our Kingdom House of Prayer. And I know you all got busy schedules and stuff like that, and I'm not asking, uh, you know, that you have to be there or anything else like that. But if you're able to, that'd be great. Uh, James thinks he can. Uh, Sarah thinks she can. Peter's up in the air. I don't know where all your schedules are. All I know is I will be there um, because of what the Lord showed me Sunday morning and continually through the week. Um, I personally have to do some uh, ice breaking. Um, and I'll know, you know, the Lord will call who he wants to my left and my right side as, as we go together for it. But um, that's between you and the Lord. Just letting you know where I'm heading, and uh, it may get ugly, but the storm will be calm. Okay, so. Well, just to confirm that the Lord told me after I after I wrote "Life in the Storm: Parables and Psalms," <laughs> um, he's in the building after yeah. this one. Yeah. He's in the building his way. Yeah. So. Yeah. Yeah. Amen. Amen. Praise the Lord. Yeah. Uh, so just a couple of things. So many things going through my mind right now. Uh, let's talk about first what you said about asking your dad if he was ready to go. Uh, two weeks ago when I said that the word is the key and I feel like when we speak these things uh, and the manifestation happens is when the chains are broken and we give them to the Lord to carry the burden instead of us. Uh, one thing that I, that I felt like God put in my heart was <clears throat> that when a person leaves this world is when they relinquish that last chain mm -hmm. and they're completely burden free. Uh, that's the way that I saw it. Uh, how at that point there's nothing else that you can give because you have 100% given your trust mm -hmm. to Him. And that's the moment where I believe someone's purpose on this world is fulfilled. That's, that's kind of what I saw uh, there. So I think that if a person is connected with the Holy Spirit, we kind of know when our time is going to come. Because you start seeing all those burdens go down to the point where you're like, hmm, this is probably the last thing that I have to do here before I come home to that, you know. Uh, but I don't think this whole storm thing is any coincidence because uh, this is the first time that I've actually gotten to speak to a storm and command it to do what God's Word says. And, you know, what Mike saw about going through the storm, he was in the boat with the apostles when the storm came. So we already have them. We already know that the winds and the waves bend to his word. Mm -hmm. A word that we have that we speak through. So we can just go through that storm mm -hmm. confident that the boat's not going to sink. Because why? He's already there mm -hmm. with us. So it's just uh, we're, 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 just break, we're breaking ground, basically. Mm -hmm. yeah. We're just sitting in that boat, and we're like, okay, Jesus, take the wheel, we'll just be here with our instruments, mm -hmm. worship, praising, going through, let your glory manifest, because when we get to the other side, we're going to see the, that revelation that he's wanting us to see. Mm -hmm. The storm's just in the way. Well, people are like, I don't want to go through that. I don't know how to swim. Well, didn't he tell, it was Peter, come walk to me. Mm -hmm. Come on the water. <laughs> <laughs> um, I'm gonna echo today. <laughs> we can walk on water. I'm gonna be an echo. Yeah. So I don't know. <laughs> We're having church right now. We are having this church is, right now. I don't, I, don't, I, don't, I, don't, I don't think you're, you're gonna be doing any ice breaking now. I think it's more gonna be chain breaking and doing a new thing. Because once you break the way, you know, the old ways of doing things that have never worked in the first place. I'm 
and you're, you're, you're set free. Like, back in the like the little side. <laughs> you know, you just let go. Yeah. Thank you. I'd like prayer for my anxiety. I'm having some problems with people working and these kids get I mean, instructors that can crew and it's like, I really need that now and I'm like, have it resolved. You know, I'm like, oh, cool. I shouldn't have that. I mean, I know sometimes I don't do stuff right and so I don't understand why and it's an instructor and it's horrible. It looks lousy, it's a bad thing and I, I resent it. No. Oh, I got a laundry list. So on the way here tonight, Jamie, what, four times, different times this car, five times this car stopped and yelled at her. I no, we have no idea who they are, but this that. group of teenage girls, like six of them, yeah. just stopped. Oh, there was like four of them in the car. Okay, four of them yeah. in the car. We don't know who they are, but... Bored. I don't know, but when they stop the car and they start yelling at you, you, you never know what's going to happen. Yeah, it's like a, getting a little dangerous there. And my job is unfortunately getting worse. Um, I told them I'd have something done by the third week of September. The project manager Thursday morning at 10 said, you'll have it done by Wednesday today. And I said, that's only two and a half business days. And she says, well, it's 10 in the morning. You have more than two and a half days. I'm like, I started work at 7. You know, obviously I work longer usually than eight hour days, but then I'm also being told two things I haven't even had a chance to get started yet are due Friday. So I really, I'm going to go back home and work after this, but I mean, this isn't any way to live. Agreed. So, mm -hmm. what? We uh, also Sally have, just texted well, me that uh, Tim's sister just passed away and prayed for family. Mm -hmm. Tim? Tim's sister just passed away. Oh, yeah. Tim, 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 he stayed at our house uh, Saturday night so that he could get out of the situation. And I told him he could come back Sunday, but he went back up there, unfortunately, and got in the middle of it. And his uh, the stepson's wife threatened to have somebody kill him. So I told him that he just needs to, what? Well, kind of you got No. Uh, she hit him. Yeah,
at your holy reign. This is a false. Yes. Yes, Lord. A fall. So, Lord, we ask you to do yes, creative Lord. work yes, through these storms, yes, Lord, Lord, to rebuild something yes. spectacular yes, for your Lord. kingdom. Yes, Lord. Something that has never been seen before oh, for your kingdom, oh, Lord. Lord. Just like Meshach, Shadrach, and Abednego, they walked through the fire. They, they stood in that fiery furnace and they walked out, not even smelling like smoke. We ask that you do a work in Montana, in Oregon, in the West, where those fires are, in Canada, where those fires are. Let the people arise and not even smell like smoke. When the winds blow and when the rain comes, yes. Lord, yes. the things, these nations, the people, the church will stand up. Let the church learn that she has authority, who she is. Let the bride know her identity, Lord. Help her to know who she is in you. Jesus. Thank you. Thank you, Lord. Let the heartland of this nation, Lord, yes. reach out to you, Lord, and start pushing back. Yes. Yes. The Lord also reveals that the imitation comes before the thing, the real thing. Yes. The imitation of the fire, the imitation of the, the holy rain and the true oh, Jesus. Yes. And the imitation of the holy fire, the yes. wind and the rain. Yes. yes, we know the this is just an imitation of your reality, Lord, because you're your, your presence, Lord, is not destructive, but is constructive, Lord. It builds. And these imitations that are coming before in these storms and these fires and things are just just a, 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 an imposter, just an imposter, just something that caused distraction and caused people to turn away from you. But, Lord, we know in the midst of these things, many people will turn their hearts to you, Lord. And just like at 9-11, Lord, I saw it in so many places, Lord, that just for a short moment, Lord Jesus, people can run into you. Then six, eight weeks later, they're back to the same old thing, Lord. It's not this time, Lord. Not this time, Lord. We don't want the imitation. We don't want the imitation fire. We don't want the imitation rain. We don't want the imitation wind, Lord Jesus, that the natural is trying to stir up. We want the real thing, Lord. We want your heavenly throne, Lord. We want the storehouses of your holy fire, your holy wind, your holy rain, Lord, to come forth. And we bear our face into your window, Lord Jesus, and accept what you have put in our hearts to press through, Lord Jesus, that your name would be glorified and magnified. Thus far, no more. The line has been drawn in the sand. The line has been even drawn in the water. We move forward in the name of Jesus. And Lord, with your wind in our sails, Lord Jesus, we will not back off. We will not back off, Lord Jesus. Guard our eyes, guide our ears, guide our mouth, Lord Jesus. And help us only speak things that you are declaring, Lord Jesus. Pure, pure thoughts, pure pure agendas, Lord Jesus. All from your throne room, Lord. Right now, moving forward in the name of Jesus. Bless, bless Pastor yes. and Sally's grandson, great-grandson, Lord Jesus. Great-grandchild, Lord Jesus. Our grandchild, Lord. I pray that you watch over them, Lord. That you watch over them, Lord Jesus. Health to the mother, Lord Jesus, and health to the family, Lord. Thank you, Lord, for this blessing. Even in the eye of the storm, there's a birthing going on. And Lord, this is just a just a imitation in the spirit in the natural realm of what's going on in the in the supernatural, Lord. Because in the eye of all you, the holy storms that are going on, all the storms that are going on yes, around Lord. in the natural, there's birthing going on. Yes. So, Lord, in the midst of your holy storm, Lord, yes. there will be birthing going on in the spirit realm also. And we declare the birthing right now in the name of Jesus. Right now, in the name of Jesus. Right now, in the name of Jesus. Hallelujah. 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 Fresh ones of the Holy Spirit. Fire. Thank you, Lord. Thank you, Lord. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. Here we go on with what we've been praying and declaring. I'll speak the word of this morning. Uh, all these things. There's one thing that I mentioned earlier. I think we're going to be in a very unique position right now to declare over certain things that are happening in this country to change uh, to put this whole immigration deal that has just created this uh, I don't know weird reaction with some people that, that actually are against what the president just said what he's going to do and there's, there's some people that are speaking some things that are actually the opposite of what their beliefs are and what they uh, 
what they share and like what their agenda is. For example, the CEO of Planned Parenthood is making statements like every 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 person deserves to live. Which is funny because it's so abortion. So I, I think we should use those things and and, and and pray and declare that the words they're speaking, that we know our words of revelation, actually treat their back and that revelation comes to them. And the words that they're speaking right now actually become what they believe mm -hmm. rather than speaking against what they're currently uh, pushing and, and promoting. I see a domino effect going yeah. on. Hallelujah, hallelujah, hallelujah. Amen. Glory, glory. Amen.
breaks my heart, Lord, because I know that you are good. And your goodness is overwhelming if we will just simply receive it. Allow it to wrap. Oh, your love is a warm blanket wrapped around us, Lord. Your loving embrace. You are rest for the weary, Lord. You are freedom to the captives. Oh, how can people be so wrong about you, Lord? Even the children, the children know. The babes know. Jesus. Jesus is good. Jesus is love. Jesus is dancing and, and singing and praise. It is the enemy that, that lies and cheats and steals and kills, Lord, not you. Let us raise up a standard of truth in this world. Let us raise up a standard that cannot be denied. Let your church rise up in power, showing forth the truth of Jesus Christ. The simplicity of your gospel, Lord, it is finished. It is finished. For whosoever will, Lord, it is finished. That you have done it all, and we must simply receive yes. the gift yes. of grace. Yes. To lay down our own lives, to lay down our own will, our own knowledge, our own wisdom, ourselves, Lord. To lay them at your feet. Cast aside this life full of filthy rags and sin and deceit in exchange for the most precious pearl, the priceless pearl of your grace. Let our lives speak so boldly of your grace that people cannot doubt who you are. Let us proclaim your goodness from the mountaintops, from the valleys, from the eye of the storm. We will say that you are good. Deliver this word tonight, Lord. Life in the storm, Lord. Life in the storm. Deliver it and let it be seed sown in our hearts in Jesus' name. Yes. Thank you, Lord. Thank you, Jesus. Thank you. Oh, I am just overcome with his goodness. And there are so many people right now cursing his name and blaming him for all of these horrors going on in the world right now. And it breaks my heart. It breaks my heart that they don't know the truth and that their answer is the one they're blaming for their problems. Their answer, their hope, is who they blame for all their problems. So... Can I share something quick? Yeah, absolutely. Uh, as we were worshiping during Holy is Our King, in the first verse when he talks about the angels gathering around his throne, I started thinking about that, and, and that image came to my mind, and I started thinking about how, you know, the angels are created by God, but it never says in the Bible that they were created in his image. They're just simply his creation. And the angels, even though they speak, they were simply messengers. They were not declaring things the way that we can. And I was thinking about that, and another thing came to my mind, and it was about possession of either animals or people by demons and evil spirits, and how there's always that struggle between the spirit and that organism. The reason for that is because there's no spiritual compatibility. The only part of God's creation that is completely in tune with his true nature are us. Because it says so right there in Genesis, man was created in his image. And that's why there's never any conflicts between our spirit and the Holy Spirit. What, whenever there's conflict, it's from the flesh. But that's also why, because we are truly in sync with his Holy Spirit, our spirit is. It's what we can actually speak as if we are him. So I had that revelation while we were there. I wanted to share that. Amen. So every time Nathan asks me to speak, I try to listen. I don't, I don't try to come up with something. I try to listen. And I try to just be a mouthpiece. And 
my life has been very chaotic lately. Uh, with my dad in the hospital, all these procedures and rehab, work has been tremendously busy. Um, you know, as you rise, the expectations and responsibility becomes more. Um, client requests, it's a blessing to grow your client base, but then you have to service them all. Um, anyway, so I feel like there's just storms everywhere. Distractions. Sickness and disease are no different than a hurricane in our lives. Um, busyness, um, work pressures are mountains in our lives. These are storms, these are things that shake things up. And they can either, and, and I think Mike, it's exactly what you said, we can either pray our way around them, but I feel like the Lord is saying we have to learn how to live through them. We have to know how to survive, and not just survive, but to thrive. Whether it's hurricanes, whether it's fires, whether it's winds, whether it's sickness and disease, whether it's busyness, no matter what it is, we have to learn how to not pray our way out of things and just move forward and walk through things. And um, I feel like this is part of us maturing. And I'm not saying that, because I read something and I don't agree with this, it said, why does God allow trials? I don't think God allows trials. I think trials are all around us. Yep. I think this world is just simply full of them. I don't buy that for a second. I, don't, I know that God will judge the nations, and so I know that there's some truth to that, but I don't think God sends these hurricanes. I don't think that we, we can take it as a warning. I take it as a distraction from the enemy. I don't, I don't know. I, I'm not going to get into all that. But I feel like God is telling us to grow up. He's talked to Nathan about it. He's talked to me about it. He wants us to grow up and be mature Christians because only mature Christians are going to see the return of Jesus Christ. And it is time, church, for us to grow up and mature. Come on. And part of that is learning to live in the storm. What is life like in the storm? Right? The storms are going to happen. We're never going to have, I mean, I feel, I, it's so funny because I remember a few weeks ago, sometimes I live in a prayer request, we go through a season where everything's going fantastic. Uh -huh. Things are great. Like I could come home and I could have dinner with my family even during the week and like there's time for everything and everything just goes smoothly. And then there's times where no matter what you do, there aren't enough minutes in the day, there aren't enough hours in the day, sleep is optional, and pressure, 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 pressure. And it's weird to be unchanged. Out of weird to be unchanged in both of those situations. Not to kick back. I, I read a parable or something that says about wisdom. And it said, um, you don't go fishing when it's harvest. Mm. Fishing, there's nothing wrong with fishing. When it's time to harvest, you don't go fishing. You harvest. That's what that wisdom, right? Wisdom tells us. And so when the storms are raging, it's not time, to, go, it's not time to, to sit back and pray. It's time to come and walk and face the storms. <coughs> Not to sit back and pray, which is what I see. Again. Pray, pray, pray. I'm not saying we shouldn't pray, but we don't sit back and pray. We walk forward in prayer. Come on. We pray without ceasing. Prayer is not something we go do. Prayer is who we are. That's our breath. That's our that's our source. That's our bread. That's our bread. Is speaking the word. We're feeding ourselves when we speak the word every day. So I'm just gonna share some scriptures. I'm going to go a little bit out of order. I wish I had a pen so I could check these off. But I'm going to start with Deuteronomy 31, verse 6. Because I remember preaching this. And so I'm eating a little bit of my own food here. <laughs> I remember saying this. Could you get James? And, oh, I was so Deuteronomy 31, 6. Thank you. Deuteronomy 31, 6. I was talking about crossing over. Remember, remember this? I don't know if anybody remembers me talking about crossing over. I was talking about Joshua. I think it was Easter. I was talking about Joshua. And I was talking about being ready to cross over where there's giants in the land. Oh, James, are you coming out there? <laughs> mm. He, he was ready to do a, a, a rim shot if you said something no, funny. I, <laughs> I got so excited. <laughs> I got so excited. <laughs> Come on, James, you're all right. Go, go take a nap in the back. I don't want to take a nap. I'm going to So what you're saying is it's kind of like my mind's like I'm in the but I was saying, this scripture caught my eye today because it reminded me of something that I said <laughs> in Easter. I said, let's be ready to cross over. And when we cross over, remember, there'll be giants in the land. Well, guess what? We're crossed over, and there's giants in the land. So let's, Hello? you know, go back and let's see what advice I had back then and see if it was any good. <laughs> be strong and have good courage. Fear not, nor be afraid of them. For the Lord thy God, he it is that go, that, that go with thee, he will not fail thee, nor forsake thee. I'm going to, I don't know, t-shirts, whatever, bumper stickers, on my mirror, lipstick. I need to put this everywhere I look. Do 
not be dismayed by the fiery trial. Do not be dismayed, church. There will be fiery trials. There will be giants. And we're shocked. And we're, we need prayer. And we need to pray through it or pray around it or get out of it or, you know, whatever. Do not be strong and very courageous. It's going to take courage, church. It takes courage to grow up and deal with grown-up things. It takes a lot of courage. Grown-up things are not fun. Grown-up things are not for children. They're for grown-ups. And we're mature Christians. We're grown-ups in the Lord. Okay. So we're the ones that are going to deal with the giants, right? Be strong and of good courage. Fear not. Fear is the number one trick of the enemy. And I wish I had never read it, but there is a proverb that says, what you fear, you draw to yourself. Mm -hmm. What you fear most, you draw to yourself. Mm -hmm. That is a spiritual truth. And the enemy knows it. If he can get you afraid of it, he can sneak it in a side door. And I'm telling you that when you find yourself being afraid, if nothing else, say the word Jesus. Call on the name of the Lord. Say the name Jesus. Saying his name, look at his face, think about him, and that fear will, will subside. He is our courage. I'm not courageous because I think I can go defeat some giants. I, I can't. I'm courageous. And I shouldn't be afraid of them. And I'm not afraid of them because the Lord, my God, it's Him that goes with me. He goes with me everywhere I go. He's my big daddy with the big stick, right? No holy is going to mess with my daddy, right? And He will not fail me. And He's not going to lead me. That's right. He's not going to lead me right to the giant and say, okay, you got this, girl. I'll see. You. I'll pick you up later after school. Daddies don't do that, right? Daddies walk their little girls into the school until they know they're safe. Or daddies deal with the bully for the little girl. Our father is not going to take us somewhere. He doesn't have a plan. He doesn't have something for us, a lesson to learn. If nothing else, to just trust him. There's a lesson to be learned. Not because he's testing us, but because he's trying to teach us who he is and who we are. And he's trying to give us his wisdom. And his wisdom comes from experience, right? How many know you can read about it? So I was thinking about this, right? You can read about going to Paris. And you can watch a movie about going to Paris. And you can see pictures of people in Paris. And you can know where things are at on the map in Paris. And you can see beautiful paintings and pictures. And you know, watch TV shows and movies shot in Paris. Oh, I know where the Pont Neuf is. And oh, the, the, you know, you can just imagine what it would be like. But how many, how many of you know that until you've been there and sat in a cafe and drank the coffee and ate the bread, mm -hmm. never know that's the best part of Paris, mm -hmm. <laughs> the coffee and the bread. That's when you know Paris. You've experienced, you've tasted, and you've seen. We can read all we want about the Lord, but until we've been there, until we've tasted and seen, until he has proven himself in that situation, then we have wisdom. Then we have true knowledge. Not just book smarts, not just scriptures. I, I know so many people that memorize scriptures. And I think Sarah said, you know so many scriptures. I'm like, well, I just know them because the Lord taught them to me, not because I memorized them. Because I had an experience where he gave me a scripture that was part of my life. And then you don't forget those. I didn't just go read the book. My grandma memorized the Bible. She could tell you any verse, any chapter. It was kind of amazing. But I didn't see a lot of fruit. I didn't see a lot of application. You know, and it kind of breaks my heart. But it's different. Because she didn't taste his goodness like I have. And she didn't understand the things I tried to share with her. Because her experience was completely different. So this is the place where we're going to start. No matter where we find ourselves, be strong and very courageous. Fear not. Do not let the enemy get you afraid. Do not, do not let the enemy steal your hope. I feel like hopelessness is the other thing that's kind of he's stealing us. He's making us weary and he's drying up our hope. Our hope is like that well, right? That deep well in us is our hope. And that well can run dry if we don't feed it, if he doesn't feed it, right? And so I feel like that's the other thing, stealing our hope and getting us in fear. Uh, now let's talk about some storms. Um, so, oh, pen, it's magic, thank you. Um, let's go to Matthew 8, 23 through 27. Matthew 8, 23 through 27. Hopefully I can speak King James tonight. <laughs> First one rolled up the tunnel a little bit. And when he was entered into a ship, his disciples followed him. And behold, there arose a great tempest in the sea, 
uh, a tempest is a large storm, uh, insomuch that the ship was covered with waves, but he was asleep. And his disciples came to him and awoke him, saying, Lord, save us, we perish. And he saith unto them, Why are ye fearful, O ye of little faith? That he arose, and he rebuked the winds and the sea, and there was a great calm. But the men marveled, saying, What manner of man is this, that even the winds and the sea obey him? So let's go back to the last page. So let's just imagine for a second, you're in a boat, surrounded by water, right? And the waves are large enough to crash over the sides of the boat. I'm not much of a seafaring individual, but that seems pretty scary to me. And these, these, some, of these, some of these disciples were fishermen, so they were seafaring people. And it was enough, it was a big enough storm that they were afraid. People who had been on the sea and who'd been through many storms, they were afraid and they thought they were dying. So this is not just a rainstorm, right? This is a raging storm. But they forgot who was on the boat with them. Just like you were saying, Roberto, they forgot who was on the boat with them. They didn't understand who he was. And they didn't understand what he represented. He's hope. Hope can't die, right? Hope doesn't die. The promise never dies. The promise can't die. All right, so let's go on. And remember what we said, the, the, the wiles of the enemy, right, in verse 26? Why are you afraid? Fear, right? Fear. So it's natural to be afraid. It's not unnatural for us to fear situations we find ourselves in. It's normal. It's rational thought. But the truth is not rational thought. The truth is simply the truth. And the truth is, where's our faith, mm -hmm. right? Because you can't have faith and fear in the same moment. It's one or the other. And we have to choose. We have to make a decision, right? We get to decide. Fear comes on us, and it's natural. But we have to decide, are we going to let it take hold, or are we going to reject it? And like I said, call the name of Jesus. I, the enemy likes to get me in my dreams. It is the weirdest thing. It's like that half sleep time when I'm not really conscious, and then those attacks come, and I wake up, and I'm like, to the point where I've gotten out of bed before because I felt like someone was strangling me. And all I can do is turn on the lights and say the name of Jesus. But nothing can touch us. Nothing can harm us. We have the keys to death, hell, and the grave. What else do we fear, right? And then they still didn't understand, even, so, so a great calm. So we know that Jesus speaks to the storms, right? Was, he was sleeping. So honestly, he didn't even notice the storm because the storm, he didn't even care, right? Take a nap, right, Roberto? Hurricane, okay, let's go take a nap. Let's go take a nap. I mean, that's literally to be our reaction to the storms because it's finished. Because if it gets severe enough, if the boat does start to fall apart, guess what? Jesus walks on water. What do we have to be afraid of? Um, let's go to Mark chapter 4, verses 35 through 41. It's another rendition of the same thing. It's uh, Mark's telling of the same story. Uh, chapter 4, verses 35 through 41. On the same day, when evening had come, he said to them, Let us cross over to the other side. <coughs> crossing over, right? We're still talking about crossing over. Only this time, you know, it's nighttime. Well, that makes it a little scarier, right? It's night, it's evening. That makes it a little scarier. How I many of you know the dark holds lots of mm, scary things, especially when you're a little one? Now when they had left the multitude, they took him along in the boat as he was, and other little boats were also with him. And a great windstorm arose. Sorry. That's okay. And a great windstorm arose, and the waves beat into the boat so that it was already filling. The boat was filling with water. And what happens when the boat's full of water? It sinks. But he was in the stern, asleep on a pillow. <laughs> he was comfortable. He had been a pillow even. Chilling. And they awoke him and they said, Teacher, do you not care that we are perishing? Now that's a different question. Mm -hmm. That's a different question. You don't even care? Do you think he didn't know? Right? Did Jesus cause the storm? Nope. No. That's, a, that's preposterous. Even though everybody wants to blame God for these hurricanes. Preposterous. Did he care that the boat was filling up? I'm sure he cared, but he was tired. He just ministered. He'd given and given and given and given and given. Ministry. Giving and giving and giving. And he needed just a minute to take a nap. Like, I feel like Jesus is me. I just need a minute. I just need a minute to take a nap. Just give me a minute. 
No, no, they're gonna wake him up because the boat's Jesus, the boat's filling out. Mom, <laughs> you know, Grandma, don't you even care? We have dramatic children, right? Teenagers, don't you even care? We also have dramatic, dramatic 40 somethings too. <laughs> I know, right? Don't you even care? Talk about an absurd question to ask the Lord. Mm -hmm. We know He cares. We know He cares. He cares for us very much. But He got up, right? He got up, He rose, and He rebuked the wind and said to the sea, Peace be still. And the wind ceased, and there was a great calm. That just makes me relax just saying that out loud twice. There was a great calm. How many of you need a great calm in your life right now? Amen. And there was a great calm. Peace be still. Just say it out loud over and over. All that peace be still. Peter, when you're working, peace be still. Peace be still. When you're working, peace be still. Peace be still. When the grandkids are, oh, both of them are over, peace be still. Peace be still. Peace be still. And there's, there'll be a great calm. That's a promise. There'll be a great, great calm. But he said to them, why are you so fearful? How is it that you have no spirits? And they feared exceedingly and said to one another, Who can this be that even the wind and the sea obey him? So not only were they afraid of the storm, now they're afraid of Jesus. Who is this guy? What? He just saved you and now you're afraid of him? Because you just realized the power that he had? Well, guess what? We have the same power. And that fear should be awe. And people should be awed by the power that Jesus Christ has given us. Uh, let's go to Matthew 14, 22 through 27. Matthew 14, 22 through 27. Immediately Jesus made his disciples get into the boat and go before him to the other side. We start to everything in the boat, right? <laughs> he said, you go get in the boat and you cross over. And while he sent the multitudes away. So again, Jesus is done ministering. Jesus has had a long day. Jesus is tired. Jesus has had a full day of ministering to thousands, right? Can you imagine thousands of people? I, I literally said the words to my husband, I need five minutes where somebody doesn't need something from me. Just five minutes. Five minutes where someone doesn't need something from me. I feel a little uh, guilty for saying that out loud when Jesus is ministering to thousands of people who you know he stood and ministered to every one of them who wanted to come to him. And when he had sent the multitudes away, he went up into the mountain by himself to pray. Now how many know how wise that is when you're tired, when you're crabby, when you've had a long day, sorry honey, sometimes you need to go to the mountain and pray and just be alone with the Lord. Because if we don't fill our cup, church, we get dry. Get and when we get dry, we lose our hope, we lose our joy, we lose our peace. We can't be dry. And when you give and you give and you give and you give and you minister and you minister and you do it for the Lord, you do it, you know, you do it for Him all day long. We give and we give just for our families, the people we love. We have to fill our cups. And if we're going to persevere the storms of this life, we have to take the time at the end of a very long, busy day and go up the mountain and pray and take some time with the Lord. And when evening came, he was alone there, so he stayed until he was where he needed to be, right? But the boat was now in the middle of the sea, tossed by the waves, for the wind it was contrary. Very windy day, because the boat was halfway across already. Now in the fourth watch of the night, which I don't even know what that means in seafarer talk, but I'm guessing it's late. Uh, late in the night, Jesus went to them walking on the sea. And when the disciples saw him walking on the sea, they were troubled, saying, It's a ghost! And they cried out for fear. I don't know if anybody else is rooting for the disciples to figure out who Jesus really is, but at some point, I'm really hoping they get it. It's a ghost. No, it's your Lord. But immediately Jesus spoke to them, saying, Be of good cheer. Good news. It's me. I'm not a ghost. It's I. Do not be afraid. Uh, let's go to the next. Well, well, we know what happens after this. I don't think I need to read it. But we know what happens after this, right? Not only did he say, Good news. It's me. When they went, What? 
and Peter went, what, Lord, if that's really you, I, it's a ghost. If that's really you, Lord, make me walk on the water. You know he didn't think that was going to happen, right? He's like, oh, sure, yeah, right, it's you, Lord, sure, it's you. Make me walk on the water. So guess what? Peter walked on the water, right? But then Peter went, oh, my gosh, I'm walking on the water, and went like this, and he went like this, <laughs> right? We know that story. There's so much wisdom here, guys. This is life in the storm. This is life in the storm for us as Christians. We know these stories. We've heard these scriptures. But this is life in the storm. Do we, are we going to be like the disciples? Or are we going to be like Jesus? Right? And I don't know how many of you have seen that movie, The Shack, right? where he walks on the water with Jesus. My favorite part is when he, he and Jesus were on the other side. They went to go back, and he started walking, and he just like sunk down in the water. They looked at Jesus. He goes, it works better if we do it together, doesn't it? Ding, 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 ding. Crazy, huh? Like, why are you doing that? Because you know what? If we can't walk on the water, it's not because of us. It works better when we do it together It'll with Jesus. It'll keep you awake. Yeah. Everything in life works better when we do it together with Jesus. Okay. Um, Matthew 7, 24 through 27. And I might just kind of stop here. Maybe a couple more. And now, oh, sorry. Uh, Matthew 7, 24 27. Yep. Therefore, whoever hears these sayings of mine, right, parables, 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 and does them, I will liken him to a wise man who built his house on the rock. And the rain descended, and the floods came, and the winds blew and beat on the house. That sounds kind of like a hurricane, doesn't it? And the hurricane came, but it did not fall, for it was founded upon the rock. But everyone who hears these sayings of mine and does not do them will be like a foolish man who built his house on the sand. And the rain descended and the floods came and the winds blew and beat on the house. The hurricane came and it fell and great was its fall. We get to choose where our house is built. We get to choose the word or not the word. The word or not the word. Jesus Christ is the rock. He is the word of God. Okay. Um, let's see. Uh, I want to end, I guess, with Psalms 150, 1 through 6. So I feel like this is the transition scripture into Friday night, right? So let's choose to be wise as we live life in the storm. Let's choose to avoid the snares of the enemy, right? Fear and um, weariness, stealing our joy, letting ourselves go dry. And let's choose wisdom, right? To have our cups filled, to trust in the Lord, and to say, peace be still to the storms. And while we're in the midst of the storm, and while we're just living our lives, let's praise the Lord in all that we do. Amen. Praise changes everything. Just mm -hmm. like prayer changes mm -hmm. everything. We are to pray without ceasing and, and always be at the end. And with thanksgiving and everything, what better way to give thanksgiving than in praise and worship? Praise the Lord. Praise, praise God in His sanctuary. Praise Him in His mighty firmament. Praise Him for His mighty acts. Praise Him according to His excellent greatness. Praise Him with the sound of the trumpet. Praise Him with the lute and the harp. Sorry. That's okay. Praise Him with the timbrel and dance. Praise Him with stringed instruments and flutes. Praise Him with loud cymbals. Praise Him with clashing cymbals. Let everything that has breath praise the Lord. Amen. Let everything that has breath praise the Lord. Church, if we don't praise Him, the rocks will cry out. Amen. And so I'm telling you that the key to life in the storm is, and there was a great calm, right? There was a great calm. And when we speak to the storms and there isn't a great calm, we keep trucking right through anyway. And know, be strong and courageous, for He is with us. He will never leave us. He will never forsake us. And we praise Him. Amen. We praise Him. We dance. We sing. We make a joyful noise. And we praise Him because He is worthy and because He is good. In Jesus' name. Amen. Thank you, Lord. My uh, daughter just texted.
stuff, but air there is unfit to breathe, so there's supposed to be rain tomorrow, so I'm speaking rain into that atmosphere. My last job today was cleaning for a 95-year-old little lady, weighs less than 80 pounds. <laughs> She's a sweetheart, but boy, I worry about her every time I go. She uh, told me probably in that two hours I was there, I want you to read something, I want you to read something. And it's like, okay, am I supposed to stop cleaning and read something? So she lives on the go, and this is what it said. Enjoy the warmth of my presence shining upon you. Feel your face tingle as you bask in my love light. I delight in you more than you can imagine. I approve of you continuously, for I see you choked, cloaked in my light, arrayed in my righteousness. I want you to relax in the assurance of my perfect love. I think that's what we're doing, is relaxing in the storm, right? Yeah. And then the passage of scripture was uh, from Isaiah 61, um, 10. I will rejoice in the Lord, my soul shall be joyful in my God, for he has clothed me with garments of salvation. He has covered me with the robe of righteousness, as a bridegroom decketh herself with ornament, himself with ornaments, and as a bride adorneth herself with her jewels. I was going to do that on the ladies' retreat, but I just felt like it kind of, you know, yeah. went along with uh, just learning to bask in his, in the warmth of his presence, wherever it is, in the midst of the storm, bask in his presence anyhow, right? Amen. Yeah, the other thing that I didn't get to, because it's getting late and I'm all weary, but the other scripture that the Lord took me to was from Isaiah as well, um, about uh, Isaiah 54, right? That's the one that the pastor promised. Oh, you afflicted city, storm-tossed and not comforted, listen carefully. I will set your precious stones in mortar and lay, you, lay your foundations with sapphires. And I will make your battlements of rubies and your gates of shining barrel stones and all your barrier of walls of precious stones. And what he told me is he will rebuild the cities that are destroyed with these storms. But it's, it's, the, it's the rebuilding. He's in the rebuilding. Amen. And so if something is destroyed, he will make it better than it was before in his glory. In the glory of his kingdom. Glory. He's in the rebuilding. It's what he's doing. All right. All right. All right. We're done. Oh! <laughs> Praise the Lord. I was waiting for somebody else to get up there. Oh, yeah. Thank you. No, not, not me. <laughs>